All right. So welcome, everybody. This is Talk to Think. The Talk to Think show is a show that we do for the members of the So Do It Society. And we have several of you online here today. And I put the invitation out to the world this morning, so we may have some people joining us as we talk. Um, we meet on Wednesdays. And starting next month, February, it will be 11.30 a.m. Central Time on Wednesdays. Um, and we talk about what we want to talk about, actually. It's sort of things that affect the women um, of the So Do It Society. Creative Women Crave Connection is what we believe. And this is a way for us to offer connection to anyone, no matter where they are, every week. Um, many of us are solopreneurs, are people, uh, stay-at-home moms, people that are in their homes a lot or don't really get a chance to um, talk with a lot of other people about stuff and feel what I call isolation inertia, which is sort of that, that feeling of you've got a lot of ideas, but you don't know where to start. You're not talking to yourself anymore but you kind of feel like you need to talk to yourself. Um, so this is a way for us to um, kind of get away from the isolation inertia that many of us feel and to talk to think. Um, this show was born out of, and my So Do It Society was born out of me realizing I needed to talk to think and I was suffering from isolation inertia which is what I decided I was going to call it back in the summer of 2016. So I'm really excited that you guys are able to join us today. And normally we have about 10 or 20 minutes of either an interview at the beginning um, where one of the hosts interviews someone that is really exciting and cool. Uh, we've got a couple cool ones coming up soon. Um, but today, because this is the fifth Wednesday, it's like a the gift of Wednesday. <laughs> so we're just opening it up and we're just having a conversation. And what we are going to converse about is what I call making shit, shit happen. Um, we are not about getting things done, although that is kind of a cool deal when you can actually finish something. But we're about making it happen. We're about taking action. We are about... Um, putting those back burner projects, bringing them to the front burner and making them happen. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, I would love to introduce to you, since she can't introduce herself since her microphone's not working, um, and then I'll have you guys introduce yourselves um, briefly. Lori Marsh is here with us today and she is um, one, she's the actual producer of this show. Uh, she and I connected a while ago. So Lori Marsh of Cre Lori Marsh Creative .com. Uh, Lori is a photographer. She's also a producer and she is a story coach. And Lori is one of our hosts. She hosts the second Wednesday show about why story matters and why that is important in every aspect of your life and business. Um, Wendy, do you want to say a couple words about who you are and why you're on this show today and why you're interested in talking to Think? Well, thank you very much. I'm so happy that I just spontaneously was on Facebook looking for something and then this popped up. So yeah. I thought I'd jump in. So uh, when you get to a certain age, you have a lot of stories, but I'll make it brief. So <laughs> the turning point was I left the business. I used to be a salesperson for the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal for seven years. Mm -hmm. So I sold corporate subscriptions and various corporate products. Well, one thing led to another, and Lori, that's a story that we can talk about later, but <laughs> uh, I am now in a space where I'm an independent representative for send out cards. So <clears throat> I work with clients who want to create their own custom cards and really touch people's hearts by sending unique greeting cards to the client as a relationship marketing strategy. And also artists who want to put their art on greeting cards and send them out one at a time. So this isn't so much mass production, but send out uh, greeting cards one at a time to show off their art to select uh -huh. people. So um, I was up at four o'clock in the morning with, of course, the next great idea uh, and came up with some something that I want to do. And uh, 
So I feel as though I never have a shortage of ideas. There's only so much time and energy. And some of it is just creative, the next bling. And the other, is this is actually a strategic thing that's going to make money. Right. Yeah. You fit right in with uh, the women of the So Do It Society. A lot of big idea people. But um, we, as I, our guest coming up in uh, two or three shows, um, her name is Maggie Nelk. She talks about how people like me and you, and I think Lori, although Lori, you seem to be a little bit, well, as a producer, you have to be a little bit of an implementer as well. Um, these uh, big idea people, the visionaries, uh, need kind of a counterpart, somebody who can uh, help them to actually implement and figure out how to do that. And you're a solopreneur, right? Yeah. So you work at home. And so that's what this whole movement of mine, this So Do It movement, has been about helping people to have sort of that back end, that board of directors, those advisors, the people that they can come to when they have big ideas, personal or professional. Yours is professional right now, but um, we've also had people come with their it. So it's so do it, right? And your it, what's that it? What's it that is sitting on your back burner? Oh, well, I'll do it when, I, when the kids start school. I'll do it when the kids go to college. And so I'll do it when I retire. And so we're helping women, whatever it is, do it now. And that's really, really fun. So here you, you have your new board of directors here or advisors, perhaps. We're not going to direct, but advise. Um, Shantae, I'm excited to have you here. Shantae and I met in, um, at sales camp, what, two years ago now, I think. It's been a while. And Shantae is a uh, virtual assistant, runs a virtual assistant's company. Um, Arizona, is that right, Shantae? New Mexico. I'm in, well, I'm in Florida right now, but New Mexico, yep. Okay, well, let me just say a moment, say a thing about cold. Marge and Shantae, Wendy and Lori and I are jealous. I'm actually wearing my Fargo. I like that. Today. Yeah, I worked on the movie, so I have my Fargo deal. It is, let's see, I actually, let me show you. I'm going to share for a second what it is here today. Where is that? I'm already well aware. It's like 28 below. Yeah. Can you see that? Because everybody's been letting me know. Yeah. This is 26 below. Yes. With, wow. Yeah. This is what we are today. So my it, daughters are in Chicago. They were, yeah, they were telling me about that crazy weather. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's pretty something. So one of the reasons I moved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Shante, tell us a little bit about you and why talking to think seems like a, a something that you'd like to take a little time out of your day to do and you definitely are helping people like me and everyone here implement so what's your deal um you you know i had this virtual assistance company and i've had it for four years but last year i decided because i was doing it along with a job Oh, but I, was, I was doing well, but I just couldn't do the things. I had all these grand plans mm -hmm. and my job was limiting me. And I was like, you know what? You, you need to just walk away. So I, I took last year and I did that December. I walked away. I resigned and it's been fantastic. I, no kidding. Oh my goodness. It's been, I mean, it, it was a plan. It was a lot of back and forth, but I would tell anybody that has a job and is planning their business just make some plans and make it happen because it's so possible. It, it's really possible. And, and things have been great leading. I was, you know, everybody worries. Oh my goodness. If I go, don't even think about that. Do the planning on the front end and just go. I think it's incredible. Good for you. And are yeah. you someone um, who would, when you say that to me, do the planning on the front end, that sounds somewhat impossible. That's not how my brain works. But are you somebody who could talk? I'm that person. Yeah, I I'd pretty much do that with my clients. They're, they're, they have fabulous plans. And while they're saying this stuff and coming up with the ideas, I'm making a checklist. Oh. And I'm making faces. And they're like, I know, I know. I'm like, I'm not saying anything. And then when they come up with all the plans, then I give them the checklist. Okay, that's great. But we're going to have to do this first. Or that's fantastic, but you told me you wanted to do these three things first, so where are we going to fit that one in? 
So I kind of have to be, you know, that person. But I, I think they need it. I, I'm drawn to creative people because they see all these things that I really don't see. I just see all the stuff that needs to get done, the details that got to get done. But I love being around people like that because it just gets your energy flowing, your creative juices flowing. And it makes me want to be more like that. So I, it's opening up my creativity as well. So I'm helping them and they're help, helping me. I love it. Okay. I love it. Well, um, at some point, make sure you put your website and all of you guys put websites if you have them in the chat mm -hmm. so that when we post this, we, um, Lori has created a beautiful website for Talk to Think, the Talk to Think show. And so there will be a blog up next week about this. Um, this particular conversation that we're having. So we'd love to share your information. Okay. Um, and I know you and I, when we first met, mm -hmm. I was attracted to your checklist piece <laughs> and you were attracted to the, oh, let's just do it kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. And we partnered for a little while um, and that was, it was really, really wonderful. So maybe this is the beginning of our next phase of how we can get you and some of the women in New Mexico or Florida or wherever happy you happen uh -huh. to be involved in the So Do It Society. Um, and I'm really excited to hear that you made that leap. That's huge. That is huge, really it, exciting. It is, and I've talked to a lot of women that they're in the same place and they think they can't, but I'm telling you, a lot of people that have businesses can automate a lot of things that they're doing right now and they don't even realize it. Just put a little bit of organization, some systems in place, automate the rest and then you're not killing yourself you're, you're doing your job you're right. doing your business and you can do both that's how I was able to do both I had some long nights but once I put systems in place automated a lot of things you they can do the same it's, it's so possible so well that's really great um, we've got I'm gonna invite Marge Weir to tell us a little bit about herself and you are welcome to turn your um, video on if you'd like Marge but you don't have to because we can hear you so tell I'm us trying, about oh my goodness I, this uh, thing on it hmm? uh oh we just lost her where'd you go Darn, um, she'll pop back in. So one of the things that I have heard recently about quote, making shit happen is we each have our own, um, well, and this is what I am as a creative rhythm coach. I help people to figure out what their own rhythm is. And famous last words is, oh, but that's really easy. Because when someone says, oh, well, it's really easy, just do X to someone that is like, that's not easy. I had a conversation recently with a financial person and we were talking about revenue projection. And there she is, Marge is back. <laughs> um, we were talking about revenue projection and what she said was, well, it's just really easy. All you have to hi, do Pam. is, hi. Um, put me in safe driving mode and then I lost the connection. So I'm okay. back. Whenever. Well, and your thumb or something is in the way of okay. your picture. There, there you okay. I don't All right, so hang on one second. I'm yeah, gonna finish sure. the thought. Um, so when this financial person said to me, well, it's really easy. All you have to do is, and she started listing out the things that I would have to do that involved an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and my mind kind of turned off when she was talking about this because that's, it's really easy. All you have to do is, is kind of, that can shut down a conversation really quickly. And <clears throat> um I haven't done what she said was really easy and all I had to do was you know, yet because it's something that is really not naturally easy for me. Does that make sense to you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to not use those words yes. on my client on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a salesperson, that's something important to know yeah. that when you talk to someone, like for me, um, if I say to someone, oh, it's really easy. You just get up there and you just talk without, you know, planning what your speech is. That's really easy. Not to many other people. So 
Um, so Marge, let's hear about you. Marge is part of our So Do It salons. She is a member of the Thursday group right now. And Marge and I met in the um, One Million Cups. Uh, I saw Marge present a couple of years ago, actually, I think. And she was so inspiring to me because she's an inventor. How cool is that, right? Talk about creative. And Marge presented about um, a product that she's created that she has literally spent years working on. And now she's part of our uh, little brain trust on the Thursday afternoon um, society and salon. So Marge, tell us a little bit about your product, you, and why this kind of conversation ability is important to you right now. Sure. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I'm unmuted. Um, thanks for this Zoom thing. Wendy, I was just like you. I was on Facebook catching up because I haven't been on for like five days on this trip and saw this. So I'm glad you posted this on Facebook because it was really, at first, it was really easy to get to it, just so you know. it was. And then I had a problem yeah. with Zoom where it went into car mode. Um, and I've never done Zoom on the phone. But um, I'm in LA because I was in clean tech and it, this was the last event. And clean tech open, I ha was courted to go into, it's a business accelerator. Um, I have mixed reviews on paying money and what you get out of it, but I made a really good connection here in LA um, at this event. So my product is Prep and Server, it's Fitwear which is a modular food storage system. The website is fitware.us or prepandserve.com. And uh, it's modular storage and the sustainability piece for clean tech is about sustainability and energy savings and such. The sustainability piece is like going to Whole Foods and bringing your own assortment or the grocery store itself has these containers and you fill up your meal kit and take it home and it can be refilled. Um, and in California here, it is a lot more, you know, people are definitely doing the reduce, reuse, recycle more, but there's a yeah. lot of room for improvement. And um, anyway, in my, I'm really glad to be in So Do It right now because I'm, I'm really feel like I've got to get this done. And my goal for So Do It was to make some money this year. And I'm now selling sh my shades, which is the other product, and they're selling on Etsy. But it did kind of dwindle off this week while I'm gone. And, and it's all online. So on the way home, um, I, I have my view out my Airbnb. <laughs> so, oh, thanks. So, yeah. yeah, that whole top row is my stuff. This oh is all gosh. the practice and stuff. So. Oh, funny. Okay. Well, anyway, um, um, it's well received that there were men at this event that actually did understand it because men are the investors. And I have a licensing agent I signed with two weeks ago at, to be in charge of licensing it. But this is to kind of keep the communication open to license wider. So anyway, um, I'm excited that you were having this this morning. Yeah, nice well, to meet you. everybody. Um, I love that. So many of us in the So Do It Society world are um, big idea people. Right. And hearing um, Marge talk about her journey as an inventor to get a product to market has been really fascinating. 18 years. <laughs> 18 years and counting. But um, it's been um, a great in a lot of ways, it's been very stressful. In a lot of ways, it's been a great life. Like if I was still a state employee, instead of doing what I'm doing now, I would be there in my, you know, going to my cube every day. So mm -hmm. I'm with you, Shante, about um, it, it, it was something yesterday. Somebody said there's supposed to be 10 million solopreneurs entering the workforce in the next in 10 what? years. And because that's just the gig society. And so they're, is an wow. endless, you know, there's endless opportunities. Can I add one thing? Sure. There was um, an article I think I read through LinkedIn, but Shantae, they said the fastest growing population of people starting businesses are African American women. Fastest growing? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I believe and it. Um, wow. the women yeah. that are getting the most amount of funding 
of their business, even though it's a very small percentage, is getting better than it was. Right, but it's it, it's yeah. still such a small percentage. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Shante, do you, um, is that something you're seeing? Is that, you know, who are your clients? Are, My that- clients are mostly um, coaches and consultants, but I have, since I left my job, I had a lot of people approaching me about helping them set up the same thing. They want to have a side gig so they can eventually leave their job, but they want to be able to maintain that side gig and do freelance work and stuff. Right. So a lot of people are interested. A lot of women are interested. They're wondering how they can do it as well and still have all these other things going on. And mm-hmm. I tell them it's possible. You just have to figure out first what you really want to do and then go from there. Cause it, I mean, I had the job and the hobbies and the husband and my, my kids are grown but I had a lot of other things and sure you are going to sweep some extra stuff off your plate. But once you figure out what your business is going to be, you will see things start to come together and it's possible. I just think I get excited every time I see somebody that wants to do that because you have so much more control right. over what you're doing, where you're going, how much money you're making. My job, I had no control over that. I could get a PhD. That wasn't going to change how much money I made. Well, and the other thing about that is um, many women who, like, I'm an example of this. I ended up, um, I had a job for a long time and very comfortable. And then after divorce, I ended up in a bankruptcy position, which I am not ashamed to talk about because it was certainly not through lack of hard work, but circumstance. And a lot of women... I love the idea, Shante, that we need to plan for it, but sometimes we end up working for ourselves out of necessity because of, you know, things that are in our way, like ageism, um, circumstance through like what my situation was and so on. My bankruptcy and all that happened in 2009, which is 10 years ago. Yes. Yay. Off. Um, But if I would love to hear about what you guys do, um, to, you know, I don't like to use the word productivity because, well, actually I do like to use the word productivity because another synonym for productivity is abundance. So when I looked up synonyms the other day, abundance was one of the synonyms for productivity. So how do you um, stay on top of things? And I'm going to start with Shante and ask you, how do you kind of keep yourself moving forward and determine which things need to be put in what I call the percolate corner um, and which things need attention now. How do you help your clients and how do you decide how that works? For myself, I start, I chose a day at the beginning or end of the week, depending on how you look at it. Sunday is my day to do strategy for my week. First of all, I figure out what am I going to try to accomplish next week? Like I have a webinar coming out, so that's my goal for next week. So on Sunday, I start figuring out what needs to get done for that webinar. And that's going to be on my top three. The other stuff goes by the wayside because I focus on the top three because I used to get distracted. I would say, oh, my goodness, I've got these things to do. Or I felt good because my planner had 10 things to do on a checklist. But the 10 things that got done, seven of them were things I didn't need to get done. So at the end of the week, you know, I didn't get anything important. So now I ask myself, is this going to help me get to the goal that I chose for the end of the week? And if it's not, it, it doesn't even get added to my planner. Because if I, if I see it there, I'm going to act on it. So I don't even put it on my planner. Ah, and what kind of planner? Are you a paper planner person? Oh, yes. I love my, I have like five paper planners, but we're not going to talk about that. But I like <laughs> paper And I have my calendar because my clients are all, you know, virtual. So I use my calendar to sync in the things, the events that I do with my clients. But I use my paper planner for me because when I write things, it sticks in my head better than typing on my phone. So okay, yeah, paper planner. How many of you are paper planner people? I have switched to the eight and a half by eleven. You know, just making notes every day. And then I also have the digital camera uh, calendar. So I'm, I'm by. 
I'm by <laughs> fire. I use I use the calendar, the the calendar on online for my mostly for my client to keep up with my clients because I share calendars with them to remind them of things they have going on or to prompt them about, hey, what are we doing about that event you have Friday or whatever. So I love the calendar for that. And then I love it for my my family stuff because my husband can put stuff on the calendar so I don't forget. No, because I'm the one that forgets the personal stuff. He remembers that. I forget the personal stuff. So <laughs> he puts that on the calendar. And then I can put that in my paper planner. But I'm still a paper planner girl. It's just because I just love planners. Oh, and I like yeah. writing, journaling. I just I have a paper planner now because before yours came out, uh, a friend in November, I had downloaded from Kickstarter, but I am not good at using a planner. I have to really do that. I do <laughs> do this online a lot more, but mm -hmm. um, I know my most productive is when I actually write it down and write those goals and such. So mm -hmm. this being in that group, being focused on having goal setting and such is very helpful. But I've been yeah. an entrepreneur since two, two, um, 1990. As wow. a graphic design, I freelanced always, even with my state job. And a lot of years, my state job was part-time. So I'm really motivated on my own because I've been on my own. But um, I, I should have had more organization around it. I'm sure I could have gone full-time and done well. But and never, you know, it was always a side biz once I had that state job. Right. Well, and that's, and frankly, I have found, I've been looking for, um, you know, a bridge job, something that I could do to support the business because um, for people that know me, you're probably surprised that I actually am doing the same thing two years later, three years, almost three. So we started at the end of 2016, two, two basically. Uh, but people might be surprised that I'm actually still doing and pursuing the same business and the same movement because I believe in it so strongly. I believe that creative women crave connection and that's what we're doing here. And we're make, we are making shit happen. We've had books published. In fact, I think if you look real right down in the corner, right down there, oh. hey, what? Um, that was one of the first things that was was published in, in our so things are happening and women I really believe in my experience for the last 10 years as a Martha Beck coach I got certified in 2009 trained in eight women would when I would ask women so well when I was living up north which is in Minnesota terms that means like rural Minnesota I would ask how many of you scrapbook everybody raises their hands and then I would say so what, what pages do you do for yourself about your, your heart projects? And in the, I don't know, five or six years that I was doing that up north, only one woman had a thing that was just hers. She played um, oboe in the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony. And so she did a page in her scrapbook about playing in the symphony. But all of the other women, it was all about their families, which is, I know, very important, I get their families, their homes, um, their kids' sports, their husbands hunting. And one woman did a whole page on her husband's guns. And I thought, where are the women in this? The women right now are the documentarians for their lives, but they're not documenting their own heart projects. And then when I would say, well, what is it that you want to be doing for yourself? They all had something to say but they weren't paying attention to it. So that's what we're all about is, is making those things happen. And, you know, Marge, I'm, I'm glad to be, to, to, that the salon is a place that you can come and it's a safe space where you can talk about some of the challenges. Um, you mentioned men are the investors. And I know that there are, uh, there's a movement right now to get, women into the investment world. And in fact, one of our guests coming up, Maggie Noak, is um, she works with angel investing and so on. And so she'll be able to talk a bit about that. Um, yeah, but they don't invest in anything. Or I mean, women are kind of the most brutal, least, in, least risk investors mm -hmm. that I've ever met, is that they will invest once things are up and running and making money. They're not seed stage investors. 
99% of the time, they're very hard to come by or they have a very specific software, you know, focus like, um, ver you know, online, like the Uber and the, and the face, you know what I mean? Things like mm -hmm. that, that are not product based, very difficult to find, at least in Minnesota. We'll see what happens. But out here at this conference where we spoke with investors, there were only a few women that were, you know, that were part of it. And they were, um, that were scouting for mm -hmm. their venture capital groups. But, you know, the focus would be mostly not in products. But the women that, the ones that won last night were two women that have come up with a new plastic that's bio-based that will disintegrate within two years. And it was, a, and they won the $50,000 prize. So that was exciting. Oh. They were very, I really liked them. It was, um, they really deserved it. So that was great. Yeah. Well, and you know, I know that there are, I've been part of conversations. Um, there is a, a national organization called Impact Hub. And I've just recently created a partnership or entered into a partnership with them and in, with the Minneapolis St. Paul Partners um, Impact Hub. And one of the conversations I was invited into there was about uh, investing in the creative class and women investing. So let's hope that things are changing. I think, I think it's on the horizon of changing and it's really interesting to hear your experience with this. I did, I do know, and I will have to look up the exact statistics, but 90 plus percent of women start, who start businesses do it through self-funding. Yeah. And what do we mean by self-funding people? Credit cards. Credit, Credit cards. cards and running your other business. <laughs> yeah, and digging into your savings. And so that's one of, and most men who start companies do it with OPM, other people's money. Right. So let's, let's work, you know, as that's part of the thing that I want to do is help women find out how they can do that. There is a site called ifundwomen.com. And I've been playing around with that a little bit. They have a crowdfunding site. They have some other um, resources and so on. So I think that's, that bodes well for, you know, how the world is moving. And with those many, what'd you say, 10 million solopreneurs entering the workforce, we're gonna need, we're gonna need some funding for women. Um, I love to, I'd love to hear from Wendy about how do you kind of keep yourself on track? And I know you're really good at it. We've talked about it in the past. Um, so you're starting, basically starting a new business again. Yeah. Starting a new business and um, so I, have, I have the resources. So Send Out Cards has been around since 2005. So the beauty is there are so many resources, so many how-to videos, so many people um, all over the world that are doing send out cards. So I'm not alone, which is great, but I get to do it, you know, quote unquote, my way. And I am combining um, with well, the company philosophy is high tech, high touch. So I am using the good old fashioned eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper to just keep a diary every day of what I'm doing and who I'm talking to. And then also using all the electronics, you know, the Excel spreadsheets, they sent, uh, send out cards has got a fantastic website with as many design cards as you need. There's a CRM. So my per first challenge was just getting all those um, Excel spreadsheets with people's name, address, telephone numbers into their system because I was so disorganized. I had, you know, I won't go into it, but Shante, uh, if I could ask you a question, one of the things that I'm running into consistently when I talk to businesses, and we all can relate to this, they all love the concept of having a CRM and a, a greeting card system and templates already done, but they all say, mm -hmm. I cannot take one more project on, I cannot do one more thing. So I have a client on Monday who there's uh, seven wealth advisors, and the owner of the company really wants to implement that it's company-wide, everybody has to do this. Mm. But between now and Monday, I've got to come up with some formula of how can they easily do this within their time constraints. So any, any suggestions on how to what take busy people and give them the one CRM? Oh, sorry. 
Oh my. Okay. Um, first of all, the CRM, if they've got a tool that's already made for them, they should be able to drop the names in, create some templates and just use the same templates with just a customized, you know, for the, a spot for the name. They have the fields you can adjust. So what CRM, are, the, the tool that you use, is it a basic CRM that anybody uses or is it specialized for your company? Those well, ultimately, you can drop, you can uh, import any Excel spreadsheet as long as you've got the fields in the right order. Mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. very simple. It, it took me like one minute to do it. So you know it's simple. So putting the contacts in isn't the hard part. Is it the creating the follow-up emails for the contacts or what is it that they're struggling with? They cannot even fathom going to a computer and pushing you know, seven buttons to say, send a card to Shante so uh, I can say thank you for the time we spent together. They're like, oh, I can't even imagine wow. having the time to input that data to get the cards in. If you created a little, uh, actually just a system for that, one, two, three steps and show them how easy it was, it would take three steps to do that. So maybe just a sheet with not even a whole sheet, this is what I need you to do for the first 15 minutes when you walk in the door. Add your contact from yesterday, click on the button that has the, the template I created for you, and then send pick. You could even pre-choose their design. Choose mm -hmm. one design for everybody, and then they got one, two, three, that's three steps. If they can't do that in 15 minutes, yeah. Or they could do it on a break or something. But really, if they start incorporating that into their day, it won't seem like a lot. Add 10 minutes at the front end or 10 minutes at the back end of the day. Okay, so 10 minutes at the last 20 minutes of the day, let's take some time and add our contacts and set up our cards. It shouldn't be that. It's not that. It, it does seem like a lot for people that have a, a tight day, but I had a tight day and I added more stuff on my plate, but I just figured out a place that I was going to do it on a recurring. I put it on schedule. It was always going to be at 3.55 that I did this. It's always going to be at 4.15 that I do that. And I think if maybe somebody could demo it for them, just show them a screenshot, you walk through how easy it is. There's a tool called Loom that I use. It's just a, screen, yes. a screenshot recorder. If you walk through, okay, this is you inputting your, your um, contacts in and show them how two clicks and you import that list in. And then once you get the list in, this is me adding the card, click. This is me adding the email, click, and then it's done. And they'll see how easy it is and you can give them that. And for the people that think they might have a problem knowing how to do it, the screenshot would help as well. Thank you. Um, I, I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, and, and here's a, again where we get to that place where, you know, it's, don't worry about it. It's really easy for me. Right. <laughs> um, and so I love the idea of using Loom. Loom, Wendy, and anybody else who hasn't played around with it, it's so ultra simple. And um, you literally show them and do, like you said, just a 30 second video on how to do this. Do you offer any kind of a, um, like an upgrade package where you or, you know, hire someone like a Shantae, a VA or someone, would import their contacts for them? That could be a upgrade, right? I'm considering that. Uh, I have to, uh, let me just say it's under consideration. I don't know what the ROI is for me. Is it better for me to be out selling new customers versus yes. hand holding and doing that work that I don't really want to volunteer myself to do? Uh, a lot of send out card reps around the world have done that and then they've got sucked into a time uh, commitment without really a good ROI. But well, that's I was in contact with a, with a local VA who said mm -hmm. that she could do it. And so you just, you, you don't do it. And this is the, thank you very much. You did a perfect segue into my next um, topic that I would like to talk about a little bit is um, this whole idea of what's easy for me is not easy for you thing. Um, if, you've, if anyone has ever read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, he has this concept of our genius zone. And Wendy, I know you well enough to know that your genius zone is talking to people and, and getting out there and helping them to understand why they want what you have. You're great at that. 
There he also, though, says that we have what he calls the upper limit problem, where we hit this, this glass ceiling of not getting to our genius zone because we are either trapped in our zone of incompetence, and as solopreneurs, we all do this. We're trapped in our zone of incompetence where we are doing the things that have to get done that are not helping us to build our business. Then the next zone is the zone of competence um, where we're really good at it and we know we can do it. And so it, it's hard for us to actually say, well, I'm gonna pay someone else to do that or I'm going to trade something for something. Um, so our, we're trapped in the zone of incompetence, the zone of competence. Then the biggest one is the zone of excellence. And our zone of excellence, my example of that is I'm really good at QuickBooks. I've been doing QuickBooks for years. I actually taught my accountant a bunch of stuff about how to use QuickBooks. And that's because I'm a quick start. And when I decide I wanna learn something, I dive in really deep and I figure it out. That's my zone of excellence. I don't wanna keep doing that. That does not feed my soul. So. To your question, Wendy, or your question, your comment, do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to get sucked into that? I don't think you do. I think you want it to be maybe an add-on that they pay extra for and you have nothing to do with it. All you do is connect the VA to them. That's my plan. That's my plan. Anybody wonder, else get well, trapped in the could, zone of excellence or any of those? I wonder if you could... Um, do because you know so many people, Wendy, that you know the ones that cards are really important to them, and maybe you've never gotten one from them, but but that they're wealthy enough that you approach them with a, you know, an, for an additional hundred dollar fee, I will set up your contacts and um, and select five cards that are unique yeah. to you or something like that, because I feel like with send out cards, part of it might like when I get on Vista print, if I don't design my own business card, which I've done a million times, it's like the overwhelm of so many wonderful options or Canva or any of that. You, you end up spending time scrolling through patterns and ideas and never get anything done. So, you know, yeah. maybe self-selecting for them <laughs> might be a good, there, there might be a way to go about it where you are getting paid up front for your extra time. <laughs> And just and just show how worth it it is. Like, mm -hmm. how often have you dropped the ball by not staying in touch? And people don't send out cards anymore, so it's very it's a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the pain away because I do and, think that's a valuable service. I have a friend who does that. Oh, and good. Yeah, and it's a really it's a great idea because I do get very. I mean, how often do you get mail? Yeah, it's right. not. <laughs> seriously it never <laughs> well and i totally agree and you know shante said this it is to have a system set up and it would be really easy for you to have a partnership with both a designer and a um well here i, I just said those words it would be really easy you do no, you wendy uh, this would be uh, easy to create um a couple of partnerships yeah where there it's all win, win, win. And you can say here, this is totally DIY. And if you're a person like me, that sounds like fun. But if you're somebody else, then you say, I can't take this on. And then you say, but well here for an extra and at a wealth management company, is that what you said? They yeah. probably have the money. So perhaps. Yeah. The beauty is money is not the issue. Uh, the owner of the company's name is Steve. Steve said he's just worried that these wealth advisors are not going to want to spend the time, mm -hmm. even though right. they know they should, but he's, he's worried about pushback. I'm going there on Monday around noon on their, on their noon. They, they have a Monday morning lunchtime, or I should say Monday lunchtime meeting. So my thought is that if they come to the meeting at 1130 by 11 o'clock, they have input the data of the cards that go out this coming week. And so they walk into the meeting and say, here's five cards, here's two cards, here's four cards. And they just data entered it somewhere. And then the VA does the actual legwork. Or even simpler, they send the VA the Excel spreadsheet and the VA gets it in there if they have such a thing. Mm -hmm. What's the 
well, I'm going to look into that with you further, Wendy, later. Yeah, me too. Because it's like, it is true. If you get it set up once, mm -hmm. then you can touch those people again. And that's so, a good realtor one too. Right. So Shantae, um, what are the, you talk about what I call SOP, standard operating procedures. Um, once we get those set up and that's, you know, and you're going to kind of roll your eyes at me, but I've been talking about doing this for two years, but it's something as knowing me, that's really hard for me is to set up standard operating procedures or even to write down what I do for everything. Do you have some advice for us as solopreneurs and as people who have big dreams to get, even if it's a, a dream of, you know, improving our health, how, what are the most important things for us to do in our businesses to move forward with our standard operating procedures? Definitely create the system. I know it's not sexy. It's not glamorous. It's not fun, but you get such return. I mean, you see immediately the difference between when you, your chaos, like I had a, a client that she's in direct sales and she created this monstrous uh, sales day. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. So, you know, how are we going to do that and send it to your team so that your team can do the same thing? So what system did you use? She's like, what system? What do you mean? I was like, you can't replicate that $5,000 day if you don't have a system. What did you do to get that, make that happen? And right. she had this look like, oh my gosh, you, are you saying, I'm like, yeah, you could have, if you can replicate that, you replicate that with your systems. Whatever you do on a daily basis, you make some kind of, even if it's just as simple as a checklist, I know it seems like, oh my God, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm just going to say it's simple. Mm -hmm. because you just have to take the minute. Every, you, you're going to do this stuff anyway. Take one day, write down, start with something small, something small you do every day for your business. When you get a new client, do you have a contract? What are the steps? You mm -hmm. have the call with the person. You have the, the um, meeting that you set up to discuss what the deliverables are going to be. You send them the contract. That's a system for client intake. That's the beginning of your client intake system. Yeah. And save the documents. Create a document out of it and store it somewhere. And then that's one system. Then you mm -hmm. have another one. But I, I tell people to start with their monster, most dysfunctional system and just take a baby bite out of that system and start because most people, their system is client intake or getting clients, which is can range from networking to uh, marketing to some other things. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of systems, of course, cause that's, I like structure, but you <laughs> well, can, yeah. if you, uh -huh, I'm sorry. I, well, excuse me. I'm sorry too. What I was just going to say is I would love to, have you on as a guest someday where that's all we talk about is uh, helping people and maybe even make it a work session where we're like, okay, everybody, you know, let's pause. And um, what's your one system that gives you grief? <laughs> you know, so we'll, we should talk about that at some point about doing some, you know, kind of a live work session about those sort of things, because I'm, um, I'm implementing something called Dubsado right now, which is an online um, business management system. But, and I know once it gets going, it's going to be awesome. But it's really, I sit down to literally, Shante, this is how I am. And I don't know if other people relate to this. But when I think, okay, what are the things that I have to do? I sit down, I'm going to, okay, I'm all excited. I've got my post-its. I've got everything and I'm going to like do this. And I sit down and it all goes tabla rasa, blank slate. I literally can't think by myself how to do this. And so I'm wondering if you guys have that same problem, if it would help if we like helped each other to come up with these systems or at least document the systems and then you'd have to actually create them. But the documenting is even hard for me. That's just my brain doesn't work that way. I would love to participate in yours, Kelly, because I'm thinking of having a workshop at the end, maybe in the fall, where we walk through systems. I do a little bit of pre-work on the front end, and I have an idea of everybody's system, and we walk through, and they leave my workshop with their systems, because 
that is just like such a pain for everybody and everybody that I meet, their business is great. They're making this money and then, but they have no systems. And I worry because not to be doom and gloom, if you have surgery or some kind of special life event, who's going to take over? If you have systems in place, anybody can go jump in and, hey, this is how she does this. This is how she does that. Even your superpowers, if you've got it documented, people can come in and hold that together while you do whatever it is you have to do, or maybe just a vacation. Mm -hmm. If you have these in place, you don't have to be getting calls 24 hours a day. You're in, you're in a foreign country on vacation, but people are calling you because you have Mm -hmm. no system set up or nobody else can do this for you or or support you. So does that sound interesting to you guys? Would it be interesting to you to have a, a kind of a live we could do it just like this with Zoom where we're all at our own computers and we talk through creating systems. Mm-hmm. I think that would be great. So Shantae, you I'd and I like would it. offline. I would love it. Oh, um, I love that. Yeah. And the okay. other thing is you don't have to have the systems complicated. If you like writing, you do writing. If you like, you know, post-it style, you do use Asana and create something in there. You can even use Loom and make some videos. And that mm-hmm. can be part of your system. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's whatever works for you. Yeah. Cool. Well, that, so what I'm hearing, and it, we're getting to the, the half hour marks or the hour mark, actually. So this has been a really great conversation. Um, what I'm hearing from people to wrap all of this up, and if there's anything else, any other bits of advice, we'll go around the circle one more time, except for poor Lori, who just has to nod. <laughs> Um, what I'm hearing is setting aside a specific time every week and making that a habit where you do some forward planning. And that's actually part of my planning system in the planners that I have is looking forward. And I do it Sundays also. Sunday evenings is my planning time. Um, So setting aside specific time to do planning and be intentional about how you spend your time. And then creating... um, repeatable and repeatable systems for your business so that you don't have to think so hard every time someone joins my salon, I don't know for sure how I'm going to get paid because I don't have that system set up yet, which is actually an issue. (laughs) Uh, So those two things, setting aside a time every week and creating some repeatable systems for yourself to make your life easy, effortless, and a natural existence as opposed to working so hard. Wendy, do you have any final thoughts on all of this? It's all good. All good. Cool. How about you, Marge? I'm, I think it's great. I'm going to do that planning bit of, you know, sticking with not in our time together, but, you mm-hmm. know, I like your Sunday night idea. Mm -hmm. And really get on track because I am very loose about, I get things done, but things are on my head and last minute. And I just keep this jumble in my head instead of having it all. And like Ashanti said, you know, three things a day or whatever to not have too much. Thanks. Yes. And Shantae, do you have any final words? Um... I just take baby steps. Everybody cringes when I, my clients all cringe when I say systems. And mm-hmm. once I show them what I mean or what, how it will make a difference, they're all happy. Even though it's, it may be, well, it might be a little different because I'm doing it for them too. But still, right. you need, if you have some systems in place in your most dysfunctional area first, you'll see the difference. It's just so much less stress when you don't have to think about what did I do last time? Where's that folder I had that I do that? Where's that? Yeah. It's all in a system. You just look at one piece of paper or one folder or one recording to find all that information. I'm going to, I'm sharing right now a page from um, the planners that I have just recently uh, uh, put for sale, but they're only on Etsy and they need to be somewhere else. So that system's not (laughs) done yet. (laughs) <laughs> but my planner system is, and it's basically, so this is how I use, <coughs> excuse me. So each week I sit down and I, the start of the week is on Monday. I set the tone. I love uh, 
being a creative. I love being able to set the tone for my coming week um, which, with a theme song, a word, and then I create what I call a brief intermission, or if you're an artist way person, that would be your artist date, which is, you know, an hour for yourself somewhere. And in Minnesota, that would be somewhere warm, um, like going to a bookstore or whatever. So I, I set those three things at the top, then I might return on intention for this week, what's my intention? And then the power of three, um, you know, what are the three areas of focus or your three goals for the week? Who am I going to reach out and touch? I call it rock your contacts, reach out and connect. Um, the three calls, two cards, see Wendy, two cards, and uh, one coffee. And then this, this little um, matrix up here, it's, it's a, a very simple kind of, instead of a to-do list, it's a very simple how to prioritize. So in the upper left-hand corner, those, those are the things that are going to require your um, attention. Like you need to schedule some time to set up systems. Um, the now corner in the upper right is what has to get done now, pay my rent, um, call the doctor, all that little stuff. And then the lower left is the percolate. And in traditional, um, the Eisenhower traditional matrix, this is, they call this the place where you throw these things away because they're getting in your way. I don't believe in tossing ideas. I think ideas should be documented and saved. And so that's what the percolate corner is all about. And Shante, you mentioned that, you know, if you have it on your calendar, it will, you'll do it. So this is where you put the percolate stuff. And then in the delegate corner is um, what you want to, what you can either automate or have someone else do because it's not in your zone of genius. So that's kind of the basis for my planners. That's how I do my planning is, and I love the matrix. I actually have a whiteboard to my left or to my right here that says schedule it, do it now, let it percolate, delegate it so that I can just jot things down with a, with a, a marker. So intentional planning, I guess that's our, after the, for the making shit happen conversation, the takeaway is the intentional, the intentional planning piece of it. And if it's not scheduled, it's not real. So there. Any final words before we say goodbye today on our, from our Zoom conversation, our Zoom talk to think? Kelly, is that planner printables or is it, how is it it's, set? It, but I'm working right now on some downloads um, so that they'd be eight and a half by 11 downloads. But right now it's a physical planner. Um, and this is like, this is one of them here. And so it's, this one happens to be the full year and I have different, because I believe in um, everybody doing things the way that they need to do it. This one is the, um, this has like actual time schedules, but I also have a version that is what I call the open layout, which is very similar to the layout in a, um, a Moleskin planner. Because everybody, you know, again, everybody has their own way of doing things, their own way of their brain making sense of something. I so, like that. I'm going to get, I, I was hoping they were paper because I want to get to, for somebody joining my team, I want to get her a paper planner too. So. Oh, good. Well, and see, there's, you can, you get to choose. The other thing is um, I believe in choice. So I have um, eight different covers that you can choose from. And this, one, this is kind of our, our motto in so do it is I don't procrastinate. I percolate. <laughs> I like so, that. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I, it's all on Etsy and I, I'll post the, the link here. Or actually, no, see, I did get something done. I forgot about this. It's on my website. I have a shop page on my website now, Woohoo! which has been something that's been on my list forever, but it's not in my zone of genius. So it took me forever to do it. Um, so that's the takeaway is make time, be intentional, intentional about the time you take to plan intentionally. Tweetable. <laughs> okay. right, guys. Um, join us every Wednesday starting next week. It'll be at 1130 Central um, on So Do It. And the So Do It Talk to Think show is brought to you by the So Do It Society and by lauriemarshcreative.com. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, Lori. Bye, guys. Thanks Kelly, for joining everybody. Meeting you, ladies. Bye.